Gabor was founded to develop the 3D bioprinting technology that Gabor Forgotch discovered at the University of Missouri. The company creates functional living human tissue. We use a three-dimensional bioprinting technology to take cells, living human cells, and place them into a 3D matrix that then can grow into tissue. Organovo's technology often sounds unbelievable to many people. The cells have the internal programming to help create the final tissue. We simply layer the tissues in the right positions architecturally. The cells then execute on their native programming to finish the job. There are really no limits to the kinds of things that you can approach with the technology. You just need inputs, and inputs for us are simply cells. It gives us an advantage because we can build things outside of the body that truly reproduce the architecture and the composition of a tissue as it sits inside the body. We have the ability to make structures and tissues using cells alone. When you can do that and create something without any foreign materials like polymers present, you have the ability to get a better representation of true human biology. So it's no secret that pharma has a big R&D problem. Drugs are failing in later and later stages. Organovo's technology has the potential to solve a very difficult problem. And that problem is for pharma companies trying to find the best ways to test new drugs and find new drugs. They don't have good preclinical models to tell them, gosh, I should take this drug into clinical trials, or this drug looks like it's going to have safety or efficacy issues in clinical trials. I spent over 28 years in the pharmaceutical industry discovering and developing drugs. When I look back at all the time I spent and how much the work was so difficult to get it done and how much frustration as a scientist that you had when whatever you did in the lab never worked in an animal model, not safe in an animal, or didn't work in the clinic and you have to start all the way back. They've either had animal models, which is a whole organism, but it's obviously not human, or they've had simple cells in a Petri dish, which are human, but cells in a Petri dish don't behave the way cells do in three-dimensional architecture. Essentially, whatever works in animal models and cellular models in a two-dimensional world does not translate to the clinic. So there is a big failure rate that comes from that. There is plenty of literature of molecules that worked in animal models, never worked in human tissues. We can fill in the gap between animal models that are used today, but sometimes don't give the best answer, and actually clinical trials in humans by creating this functional living human tissue and doing drug testing there. We can make any tissue and, and any disease model, and that's what gives the, the tremendous predictive power is the ability to make both the diseased tissue and the normal tissue and be able to compare the two. What we can do for pharmaceutical companies is to give them much better, much more predictive preclinical human tissue models. This is something they've never had access to before. So when they're trying to pick from a set of 10 or 20 drugs, we can give information in our functional living human tissue models that improves the rate of success when they make that choice. They pick a drug that has a better chance of succeeding long-term through clinical trials. More drugs, yes. Faster drugs, yes. Safer and more effective, yes. Because you'll have all the signs that you need far earlier in the process before you ever get into clinical trials. One of the opportunities Organovo has and will be developing is the ability to create these living human tissues in a way that's used directly for medical therapy. So taking a bioprinted tissue and delivering it through surgery for a specific application, a specific medical problem. When you look at the potential for tissue and regenerative medicine and how that would translate to my field, it, it, it truly, that's a game changer as much as transplant initially was because now, just think of it, it's like treating a person with high blood pressure where you're prescribing a medicine. You're seeing a patient, you're scheduling them for their surgery, you're doing their surgery at an optimum time for them with respect to their health state, their disease state, um, rather than waiting till they're the sickest patient to get their transplant. So you're actually doing what you would wanna do in healthcare, which is getting to people when their disease becomes a burden before their life becomes threatened. The ability is there to think down the road at using tissues that have been bioprinted, tissues that are purely cellular and, and do not contain any foreign scaffolding as replacement tissues for organs or, or tissues that are diseased or degenerating within the body. So in the early days, these will be simpler tissues, things like heart muscle patches, 
blood vessels and nerve grafts that are smaller and can more reasonably go through a clinical trial pathway. When we look at our donors now compared to before, the quality of our donors is deteriorating. Partly because we don't have people dying in car accidents anymore or motor vehicle accidents, uh, bike, motorcycle accidents as much. Our donors are aging, which means they are bringing their chronic diseases to the table. So the organs you're using for transplant qualitatively are different. An off-the-shelf organ would allow you to get the, ideally, the optimum quality for a specific patient. I see us being able to take the learnings from the small-scale tissues that we're building for drug discovery and scale that knowledge and scale those tissues to a size and um, a capability that really enable them to be used in the implant arena as replacement tissues for uh, diseased or damaged organs. Ultimately, obviously, the goal would be a new liver, a new kidney derived from a patient's own cells. Tissue on demand is really the, it's, it's the ultimate long-term vision of the company. If you sat down in the transplant community and asked them what are their biggest challenges that they face for their patients, it's organs. It truly is, it's tissue. If you took that out of the equation, that truly would be as transformative to this field and how it would translate into these patients for their disease states as it was when Joe Murray did the first kidney transplant, Tom Starzl did the first liver transplant, Christian Barnard did the first heart transplant. When I first heard about the, the technology upon which Organovo is founded, I just thought to myself, if this is true, if this technology can really do what people claim it can do, this is revolutionary. And it's revolutionary across a number of dimensions, across being able to provide tissues for pharmaceutical R&D that will give far greater predictive value than ever before. And of course, for developing therapies that we've never been able to develop before. Organovo has been put in a strong position and largely that's because of its investors. We've got a group of people coming on board who can see the long-term potential of this technology and are going to be with us as we grow the company, as we invest in R&D and prove out the number of things this platform can do over time. Shh. <laughs>